So today we're going to mix alginate. Um, we'll fill it up to the third line. We use three scoops and I always like to put the water in first. Three scoops in a cup. You don't want to do it in reverse because it tends to clump a little bit more. If you have the powder in first then you add the water. Initially I like to mix slowly just to get everything to congeal together like this and as it kind of clumps then you can really vigorously push against mix and push against the bowl so periodically I'll clean off what's on the back of the spatula like this and then I'm rotating and really push rotating the bowl in one direction and applying pressure with the spatula in the other and sometimes I'll kind of beat it down like this until it's nice and creamy. For the maxillary I like to gather everything up in one scoop and I'll load it in the tray like so and what I like to do sometimes is wet my fingers a little bit and then kind of smooth things out and then remove some of the excess and I'll put some on my gloves here and what's really important is to wipe the occlusal surfaces with alginate because if you want to articulate two casts together you don't want any bubbles and you want all that detail captured and obviously this isn't a patient's mouth but what I like to do is um, retract the cheek have it sideways rotated in and as I seat I like to give it a little bit of a wiggle back and forth because as you put a little strain on that material the alginate will tend to flow a little bit better and I'll hold that in until it sets. Okay so what we're looking for in a dentate patient is the occlusal and incisal and lingual surfaces of the teeth and you're looking to see how many bubbles or voids that you have. Small ones are generally okay we can flick those off but if you got large voids in those areas uh, you may consider redoing the impression. Uh, obviously the vestibule would be nice to capture uh, but that's most critical for edentulous uh, impressions because we often are making a custom tray to those uh, vestibules. Whereas a fixed impression, you're most interested in the biting or occluding surfaces. All right, so I want to show another example with the lower. I load the tray a little differently. Also, the amount of water, if you don't have one of these uh, alginate cups, uh, each line here is 20 mils of water. So if we want to do three scoops, you need 60 milliliters in these graduated cylinders. So again, I'll add the water first and then powder to the liquid. And again, I start slow in the beginning, just so everything clumps together. If you go too fast, things will kind of spill out like that. So I go real slow until everything clumps together. Okay, so now everything's kind of congealed together. Now I can really push against the bowl and again I'm rotating the bowl and the spatula in the opposite directions. Sometimes I'll really press against the bowl real well. Get rid of some of the stuff on the back side of the spatula. And for the lower arch I'll generally pick up about half of the alginate, load it in half of the tray, come back for the other half and load it in the other half. Get rid of some of the excess again. I'll tend to smooth things out. Sometimes you'll have some extras. And again, I really want to make sure I get alginate on the occluding surfaces. And as I go seat, I'll retract the lips with my finger and then also the other side with the tray. Give a little wiggle as I go down. And if this is a patient's mouth, I'd do a little border molding movement, but I'm really paying attention to make sure that the tray doesn't shift um, a lot.